many of you watching may have hangers that look like mine, putting me clearly in the oh god what have I done category of spending. For the vast majority of backers and some of you who may be watching, your first experience is through the medium of a starter ship. And it's through this starter ship that you'll experience your first mission, witness your first grand sunset over Hurston, or maybe even deliver your first box. But whatever it is that you choose to do, it's the starter ship that determines the quality of your first experience. And so in theory, starter ship should be a great platform for new and returning players to try out the different features that Star Citizen currently has to offer, enabling those new players to discover for themselves what they'll personally find the most enjoyable aspect of Star Citizen, so that they can start focusing on that and go into more specialized ships like fighters, haulers, and mining ships. Unfortunately though, in reality, Star Citizen isn't yet a fully complete project. I know, it's a big shocker, right? And so, it's inevitable that many of these starter ships which were developed earlier on are gonna fall behind the curve until they receive an update, which is where we are today. And so in this video, I'm gonna take some time to look back at the starter ships currently available on the website to help you determine whether or not the ship that you currently own or the one that you're thinking about buying to get into Star Citizen is really gonna help deliver that optimal Star Citizen experience. That way, your first adventure is the best possible version of that adventure that you could have. However, one place that you can always find adventure even without a spaceship is through Audible, the sponsor of today's video. Over the past couple of years, I've built up an awesome library of audiobooks that's made my boring commute to work a chance to take a trip to new worlds, like one of my recent favorites, Trantor, a city planet from Isaac Asimov's masterful Foundation series. If that kind of audiobook isn't for you though, they also have a vast library of other options that might be your next favorite. So if you're looking for a way to escape in that downtime between home and work, or maybe even to just learn something new, and you want to support my channel, you can head on over to audible.com slash morphologist or text morphologist to 500, 500 to get started on your 30 day free trial membership. And when you do, you'll get a free copy of my recommended audiobook, Isaac Asimov's Foundation. And when you become a member, you'll get a credit each month that you can use towards any audiobook you like in their immense collection. Actually, you know, honestly, this is probably the easiest kind of sponsorship that I could possibly get because I've already been recommending audiobooks to my friends from Audible for the longest time. Now in a moment I'm going to take you guys through the starter ships, but before I do I want to preface the video by letting you guys know that this isn't going to be an in-depth guide of each and every one of the ships featured in the video. Instead, rather, it's a bird's eye view to give you an idea of whether or not the ship is good today. If you wanted a more in-depth look at any of these ships though, I already have a series of videos called Narctic Reviews where I take a look at these ships in much more detail. And I'm always posting more, so make sure you hit the subscribe button if you like this style of video and you want to see more. And second, I am completely aware that I am missing the Reliance series in this video. That's not because I forgot it, it's because CIG conspicuously removed it from the starter ships list. And so I elected to leave it out because new players can't currently select it as a starter package. If it does become available again though, I definitely will come back and talk about it. And finally, I've chosen to leave the Anvil Arrow out of this list, because although it's classified as a starter by CIG, I think it's a terrible option for a new player, because all it can do is combat. Although it can do combat extremely well, it's actually one of the best fighters in the game. It's still a terrible option though for anybody who wants to try anything else, so stay away from that if you want to try other features of Star Citizen. But anyway, let's finally move on to the meat of the video, because I'm sure you guys are curious to find out which of the starter ships is actually still good today. Starting off with the least expensive ship on the list, the RSI Aurora MR comes in at $45 for a base Star Citizen package, and it's a classic ship that's been around since the beginning of Star Citizen's Kickstarter. This blocky little ship actually offers some pretty adequate protection with two size 1 shield generators, two coolers, and a single power plant, which is pretty standard for the class. It also has a couple of size 1 gimbaled guns with room for two additional size 1s for upgrading later on. Up top they also threw on a size 2 missile rack that comes stock with two size 1 missiles. This equates to just okay combat ability, with the option to make it a good deal better if you do upgrade it with those two additional weapon mounts. It also comes with a rear loaded outboard cargo rack capable of holding up the 3 SCU, which unfortunately isn't currently usable unless used through trade terminals. 
Luckily, you'll still be able to do box missions and looting because it does have an interior where you can store items. And because you can access the interior, you're able to access the ship's local inventory, which is a new feature added in relatively recently which is really good for you to be able to store mineables or loot items as you go about the verse doing missions. And finally, when you're tired and ready to log off for the night, because it has a bed, you can log off on this ship and get back straight to where you were the next day because of that feature. So long as the bed logging feature isn't broken that day. The Aurora also happens to be one of the fastest starter ships in this entire lineup while in the black, topping out at an eye-watering 1212 meters a second. But this changes quite a lot in atmosphere where it flies a bit more like a brick with stubby wings. So if you're planning on doing any acrobatic maneuvers or low flying, this might not be the ship for you. Ultimately though, the design is a bit divisive and isn't for everyone. But some might find its quirky design endearing. In some then, the Aurora is ancient and desperately needs some love from CIG, but it's still a perfectly serviceable entry starter today. And so if you own this ship, don't worry, you'll get a good use out of it. The next ship though, maybe not so much. The Consolidated Outlands Mustang Alpha goes for $45 on the website, meaning that the Mustang has always been the traditional alternative to the Aurora MR, offering a little less versatility with its lack of a bed and cabin in exchange for a more maneuverable platform with bigger and faster accelerating engines. Despite this though, it's still a bit slower than the MR in space with a top speed of 1160 meters a second. Luckily, its smooth lines means that it's one of the fastest starter ships in atmosphere, making it a possible good choice for those of you interested in some cheap low flying opportunities or acrobatics. Like the Aurora, it also boasts two size 1 shields, two size 1 coolers, and a single generator but slightly outguns the Aurora with its bespoke turret with two size 2 weapons with room on the wings for two additional size 1s down the line. And those weapons coupled with its maneuverability make it a better than average fighter for doing combat missions when you examine the other starters in this list. And for the cargo rack it also has a slightly bigger area for cargo holding up to 4 SCU. Unfortunately though it too is currently not functional except through trade terminals. Like the Aurora though, its looks might not appeal to everyone. Personally, I actually like it. But few can argue with its absolutely unparalleled visibility from the cockpit, and that might be a selling point just by itself. Despite all of these positives though, of all the starters I'll discuss today, the Mustang is in my view currently the worst possible choice for a new player. Its lack of a cabin means that new players will miss out on the ability to access the ship's local inventory, where they could load up on loot and mineables. It also means that loading boxes or any box missions whatsoever are just impossible. Laughable considering that this ship is classified as a light freight ship. The Mustang desperately needs some love from CIG and I honestly feel bad for anyone who has to live with this ship. Luckily, the next ship in this lineup isn't anywhere near as bad. The Enville Pisces comes in at $60. It's a relatively newer entry in the lineup of starters, being introduced along with the Carrick two years ago. This boxy little ship has an amazing amount of internal space for its ship's size, and even offers two additional jump seats for some friends. It's basically like Star Citizen's own little Star Trek style shuttle, but when you get to the components of the ship, it's a little bit less stellar than the previous two options, offering only a single size 1 shield generator, but still offering two size 1 coolers and a single power plant. But it does come with four gimbaled size 1 weapon stock, making it a pretty okay little beginner ship out of the box for doing combat. But sadly, because of its single size 1 shield generator, I wouldn't recommend getting into any turning battles with this thing. It nearly matches the top speed of the Mustang in the black though at 1150 meters a second, but is a bit slower in atmosphere than the Mustang while being a little faster than the Aurora. On the interior, it doesn't have a bed, but it does actually have a ton of space in here, meaning that you have a lot of physical inventory space to place bodies or boxes or event items, meaning that you can do a big variety of different missions easily. And because it does have an accessible interior, you can also get access to the local inventory of the ship, which is really good for the current feature set of Star Citizen. 
if you are looking for doing things like hauling then and looting, this could be a better option than the MR. However, if you are looking to do some combat missions as well, the MR is probably still going to be a better choice. It's still also missing some gold standard features, but it doesn't really quite need as much love as other ships on the list. Honestly, I think it's a weird starter ship and it wouldn't be my first choice. But hey, if you're in love with this thing because of its looks, maybe because it reminds you of a Star Trek shuttle, knock yourself out. The next ship on the list though I find personally to be a great deal more attractive than the Pisces or even the Mustang or the Aurora. It's the Origin 100i for $65. And if you recall it being more expensive than that in the past, you're right. CIG actually stealthily lowered the price, making the 100i just a little bit better of a value proposition. Because if the MR is a Camry in the Star Citizen universe, the 100i is a BMW. It does basically what the MR can do, but better in almost every way. But while it might look really fast, it's actually strangely the slowest option on the list, topping out at a kilometer a second in the black. But don't let that top speed distract you, because while it's not the fastest ship on the list, it's one of the fastest accelerating ships and one of the most maneuverable ships on this entire list, in space and in atmosphere. And because of its unique air intake system, it's also one of the most fuel efficient ships on the list, able to produce its own fuel passively while traveling through atmosphere. In terms of components, like the Pisces, it has a single size one shield generator, two coolers, and a single power plant. But it also has two size three hardpoints coming stock with two size two gimbaled weapons. And that brings the 100i's damage potential over the MR and the Mustang. That means the 100i is pretty capable in a dogfight, but pilots should be careful not to get hit too much with its single size one shield. Like the MR though, the 100i does have an internal cabin with a bed. It also has an internally accessible storage bay capable of holding up to two SCU. This internal cabin of course means that you'll have access to its local inventory, making it a viable ship for looting and long-term trips out into the verse. Its price is also luckily a bit lower than it once was at $65, making it a lot more appealing than maybe it was before as an alternative to the MR. I personally feel it's the best looking ship in the bunch, and that might be enough for some of you. Being a relatively recent addition, it also doesn't need too much love from CIG, but it's still not the newest ship in the verse and so it probably could still use some updating because it's a starter ship. Next we step up to the Aegis Avenger Titan for $70. Lovingly referred to as the Penguin, the Avenger Titan has traditionally been my personal recommendation for a starter ship. This comes down to it being able to do pretty much everything the previously reviewed ships can do, but better. It tops out at an average speed of around 1,113 meters a second in the black, making its top speed just in the middle of the pack, but it makes up for it in its speed and maneuverability and atmosphere thanks to its space plane-like design. For equipment, it has two size one shield generators, two size one coolers, and a single generator, so it's pretty average in that area. But it steps way ahead of the pack in terms of firepower with its size 4 nose mount and two size 3 wing mounts. Stock it comes with gimbaled nose and wing mounts in size 3 and 2 respectively, but if you upgrade it to fixed weapons, it can really, really pack a punch. It also has the ability to carry missiles, coming stock with two size 3 missile mounts, stock with four size 2 missiles. This makes the Avenger Titan easily the best fighter out of the entire pack I've talked about today. But the good doesn't stop there. It also has a bed and food storage, and comes with a cargo bay big enough to carry up to 8 SCU or a small ground vehicle like a Consolidated Outlands Hover Quad, Dragonfly, or Grey Cat Buggy. Sadly, it's not big enough to carry a mining ROC, but with what it can carry, it's already pretty impressive for its size. Unfortunately though, the ship was recently raised in price as a starter from around $65 to 70 bucks, thanks to, in large part, its value. It just brings so much to the table over these other ships, in my opinion. And while it's missing some gold standard features like accessible component hatches and inventory storage boxes, it still has an internal local inventory that can be accessed. Plus, of course, it has all that physical space where you can store physical items you may find out in the world for, say, events or bunkers or even for stuff like uh, looted bodies. All of these features mean that its relative age isn't that much of a factor. But like the other ships on this list, it could still use some love from CIG to bring it up to gold standard. 
And finally, we arrive at the last ship on the list, the Consolidated Outlands Nomad, Star Citizen's quote-unquote premium starter pack for $95. This ship is the most recent addition on the list and tops out not only in price but also in utility, so you do get a bit more for what you pay for. It's also not quite as slow as it looks. As in the black, it's one of the fastest ships that I've reviewed at 1,171 meters a second, allowing you to run from a fight if you need to. Unfortunately, it's a bit sluggish in atmosphere, which isn't helped by its relatively less stellar maneuverability. Where the Nomad truly starts to shine, though, is its utility. It comes equipped with three size 1 shield generators, easily making it the most tanky ship out of all the ones here on the list. It's actually pretty rare for a ship this size, although it only comes with two size 1 coolers and a single power plant. On paper, it also has pretty decent armament, with three size 3 hardpoints coming stock with gimbaled size 2 weapons. It even has two size 4 bespoke missile launchers coming equipped with eight size 2 missiles stock. One thing that's omitted from the specification sheet, though, is its poor capacitor performance, meaning that it can't fire for very long. Its maneuverability and massive profile also make it a bit of a nightmare to use in real combat. While it can do some basic missions pretty decently, don't expect to take this to any big event like a server-wide one for Xeno Threat or Jump Town, god forbid, because you are probably going to die right away. Luckily, these shortcomings are made up for by its superior interior complete with its own kitchenette, bed, bathroom, and personal storage, which will tie into future features when personal storage becomes more physicalized. This truly means that it can be used by players living out on the edge of space. Better yet, it also has a rear deployable cargo bed, capable of carrying up to 24 SCU, which is the most on this list. And it also is capable of carrying a cyclone or Grey Cat ROC mining vehicle, making it the perfect companion if you're looking to do some intermediate ground mining. It's also fairly recent, which means that it's the closest of any of these ships to a gold standard. However, it's still lacking some of the more recent functional storage bins that we've been seeing in some of the more recent ships. This isn't important though because it also has a usable local inventory because you can step in to the interior. The only problem with this ship, aside from its poor combat performance though, is the price. At $95, it's nearly as expensive as a Freelancer or Cuddy Black. That means that for just a little bit more, you could get a lot more value. And so personally, I think that this ship would be a bit better at a lower price point. And that's its only real true weakness. So in general then, through the tests I've discovered that quite a few of the options labeled as starters are a bit behind the curve for the latest version of Star Citizen's feature set. Most egregious of them being the Mustang, which as I said earlier, I pity the owners of. While I understand the importance of getting out Squadron 42, I really hope that CIG can retask some of the ship team to go back and gold standard some of these starters, mainly the entry level Aurora and especially the Mustang. While these ships aren't sexy or glamorous, they are the ships that the vast majority of citizens have. So what I fear here is that because a lot of these ships are falling behind the curve, especially the Mustang, that it's going to leave a poor taste in the mouths of many a returning backer and new player. Starters are the medium through which players experience this incredible universe that CNG is creating, and so it's a shame that it's tarnished by such important ships that have been left behind. As far as recommendations go for today's starters, my personal recommendation for the best possible Star Citizen experience for the price is still going to be the Aegis Avenger Titan. Is it really a surprise to anybody? While the Avenger Titan might not have as many features as the more up-to-date Nomad or 100i, it makes up for it by its great balance of features. In either case though, the Avenger and the Aurora both offer a way for new players to dabble in just about everything that Star Citizen has to offer at a basic level with some confidence that the ship won't let them down. And isn't that all that we want out of our space team? Guys, I've been Morphologist. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you did, you know what to do. Hope to see you next time.